Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for allowing us the privilege of coming before you as your children to worship you and to remember your goodness and praise you for all that you have done and all that you are in our lives. We lift up this time to you and ask that you would give us ears to hear and hearts of understanding. And please be with those who cannot worship or do not yet know you. Father, um, help them to understand um, the mercy and grace and love uh, you have given us through Jesus Christ, your son. We pray for our country. Uh, please protect us. Please heal us and help us to be a nation that honors you. Help us to uh, remember this July 4th weekend that we can only have true freedom when we surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. We thank you for all the things that you give us and pray for wisdom to uh, live our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. Ho, ho, ho. What? Christmas isn't until December? Well, that may be true, but this is what we call Christmas in July, where we stop and pretend ever so briefly that it's Christmas time. As you know, this summer, we're taking a closer look at faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Sure, we can't see Jesus with our eyes, but we can put our faith in who he is and what he's done. When we put our focus on Jesus, we start to understand how good he is. We realize that we can trust him completely. That, my friends, is a gift. Well, Merry Christmas in July, everyone. No, I never was really good at wrapping gifts. Ah, oh, man, looking at these other perfectly wrapped gifts, they just make me feel a little bit insecure. You know what I mean? Just, I feel like embarrassed. I mean, look at this one. Whoa, nice. You'll see why we have these gifts in a minute or so. But first, let's pick up where we are in uh, the Bible this Sunday. We're talking about what happened with the people who uh, believed in Jesus after Jesus died after he came back to life and he went back to heaven. So you probably have heard of uh, Paul, whose name used to be Saul. Um, Paul traveled around and shared the message of Jesus with people all over the place. And he also wrote a bunch of letters to encourage the believers in different churches. And we're looking at one of those letters. Um, these letters became the books of the Bible. So when he wrote to the people in the city of Ephesus, that book, the Bible, is called Ephesians. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians. It's in the New Testament towards the middle. It's chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. And it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Another version puts it this way. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift, and it is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. You know, I bet the Ephesians really needed to hear that. I know I do. You see, we all mess up, right? We all make mistakes. We all fail at things. We don't do the things we know we're supposed to do, and often we do the things we're not supposed to do, and that can make us feel pretty crummy about ourselves. Not only does it make us feel bad, it separates us from God, and at the end, it leads to death. That's what God's Word says. When we look at the people around us, though, it can make us feel like we're really messed up. I mean, we think, Wow, I really wish I could be like him. Or, man, she always does everything so perfectly. Kind of like my gift here, you know? I come out like this and see all these other beautifully wrapped gifts. And boy, 
I'm so embarrassed about my wrapping job. And these other gifts may be the way we see our friends. It might be the way we see another family member or um, maybe a classmate or a popular uh, captain of a sports team. It can sometimes seem like everyone else has it together except for me. No one messes up like I do, like this. And you know when it feels like this the most sometimes? Sometimes we feel the most like this at church. But the truth is that everyone has messed up. And even though other people may seem to have everything all together and seem to do everything all right, that's just not the case. See, look at my gifts here. It looks so good on the outside. But if you carefully examine, not so great, right? Look at this one. It seems to be perfectly fine. But when you turn it around, it's got its flaws. And this one I was admiring with all my heart. And I also just turn around. No, all the same. There's no one perfect. No one. Except for Jesus, we all mess up. Sometimes we feel like we have to fix things. So we'll try to fix things on our own. We might try to make up for what we've done by doing a lot of good things. Or we could just take what our imperfection is, our sin, and just cover it up. No one has to see it. No one has to know about it, except God, maybe. But the truth is, none of that makes the bad things go away. Here's the really good news, guys. It's not our job to fix it. And we can't, anyways. That's why God sent Jesus. Let's take another look at what Paul wrote. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Again, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ Jesus. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do, and it is God's gift. What is God's grace then? We often say it is God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches? I wonder what that means. When we put our trust in Jesus, God forgives us of all the wrong things we have done and the wrong things we will do. When we put our faith in Jesus, we're saying that we believe that Jesus' dying on the cross was enough to pay for all of my past sins and for all of my future sins. That's awesome because every sin we even will commit in the future has already been forgiven by Christ's blood shed on the cross. But wait, when we put our faith in Christ, we don't just get forgiveness. We enjoy so much more of God's riches because now God takes us into his family as a son or daughter of his. Ephesians 1.5 tells us that it has been God's plan all along for you to become his adopted child through Jesus Christ. He talks with us and invites us into his presence as if we were his perfect son, Jesus Christ. And Ephesians 1.3 tells us that God blesses us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Every blessing. Whoa, do you think I know exactly what that means? No, I don't completely, but it sure sounds good, doesn't it? And as I spend my time reading God's word and talking with my heavenly father about anything and everything and experiencing what the Holy Spirit is doing around me, changing my heart and changing the lives of people around me, whoa, then I start to understand more and more of what these blessings and riches are in Christ and what it really means now that I'm an accepted child of God. Now that I don't ever have to worry about losing my father's love, no matter what. It's like this. Recently, I went to Niagara Falls uh, with my family. Now, if Niagara Falls was just a dripping faucet, do you think my family and I would have traveled seven hours to see it? I don't think so. We had heard it was beautiful, and it was. It was amazing. I don't think I can find the words to express what it was like. I can show you a few video clips, but you had to be there. 
to hear the sounds, to see and feel the power of the water coming down. God's grace is like that. That's why we read the Bible and pray and ask to experience the Holy Spirit. The Bible reminds us over and over again that God is generous. You know, it says in that same book that Paul wrote to the Ephesians that he lavishes his grace on us. Lavish means to give generously or in a ridiculously large amount. He pours out his love and grace to us in a way that compares better to a powerful, not a boring, dripping faucet. But you know, our minds are so small that it's easier for us to think of God's love and forgiveness in a small way. Yeah, I believe that Jesus forgives me and saved me, but I'm pretty sure I have to do something else. You know, be good. No, I better be perfect just to be safe right? Huh? That's the problem I had in the first place, trying to fix all my problems on my own. And it's just the thing again. What does the Bible tell us? Trust in what Jesus has done. There is nothing more we can do to earn God's love. And guess what? There's nothing more we can do to lose God's love. Man, this is great news. So when we trust in Jesus, we get Niagara Falls. And when we trust in anything else or in Jesus plus something else, we get a boring, dripping faucet. So the one thing I want you to remember today is that Jesus is a gift for everyone. One of you is raising your hands, I know, out there. But Miss Amanda, you always tell us to read the Bible and pray almost every week. Aren't you just telling us to, do, to be good and do the Christian thing? You know what? I do tell you to read the Bible and pray all the time, almost every week, right? Because I want you to see how amazing God is for your life right now and for your future. We need to take time every day to unwrap God's gifts for us. There's treasure to be discovered. If you have trusted in Christ alone, well, I believe you will take time to read your Bible and talk to your Father in Heaven and listen to the Holy Spirit. Not because it makes you better than someone else or even more acceptable to God. No, but because God has put inside of you a desire to understand this gift that He has given you. And he has put inside of you a desire to unwrap that gift, the mystery of his one and only son, Jesus Christ. Dear Father God, thank you for this time. Please help us to understand uh, what your word says to us about your love, how permanent it is, and how uh, boldly we can approach you because of the precious blood of Christ that was shed on the cross. And pray for each of these children to give them the understanding that they need to grow in faith. I pray that you would just be with them throughout this week. Keep them healthy. Keep them prayerful in your joy and in your grace, Lord God. Thank you for being our God. And Thank you that everything you tell us is truth and life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Son and